Hey, 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 y'all. So this has been the longest day of our four day trip. We had three legs today and all the flights are like two and a half hours. I'm honestly exhausted, but I'm in Fort Lauderdale. I have family here. So I called my one of one of my favorite aunts. Let me not get myself in trouble. <laughs> and she's about to come pick me up and we're gonna go get food. But it's like 7 p.m. on 6.30 and the shuttle comes at 4.55 a.m. So, I'm just gonna eat and have her take me back. But I wanted to give y'all a room tour because I didn't give you a room tour of the other two rooms and this one's actually kind of cute and nice. So we walk in through the door right here, come into the restroom. It's a nice big mirror there. Standard tub, but if I wasn't so long, I could probably soak in here, but I'm a little too tall. That's me. And then you have your little eat area, bar area. I think there's like a nice little lounge sitting area that's really cute. Kick your feet up. Desk, television, and then of course the two double beds. What I realized is that last night, the hotel we were in, I just had one king size bed. And I like the two double beds better. Nobody's under there. Nobody's under there. Um, and the closet, of course. Yeah. But what I was saying is that I realized that I like the two double bed. I mean, yeah, I like the two double bedrooms better because with just the one king bed, I can't throw all my other crap on the other bed. I have to like be neat about it. <laughs> Isn't that horrible? Like, I just want to have one bed to throw my crap on and then crawl in the other bed. But anyways, let me hurry up because she was like two minutes away like ten minutes ago, so she's probably here. Alright, y'all. That was a quick little outfit change. She hasn't called me, so hopefully she's down there. I don't really know. I'm tired. But I don't even think I told y'all where I am. I'm in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And... I want to say, I don't think I've been here. The best part of this life is that I get to have layovers where family live and I can just come and relax for a few hours like I'm back at home. Thankful, thankful, thankful. But I'm going to tell y'all a story. This is going to be a vlogmas story time. Um, the last time that I was here in Fort Lauderdale, um, I think it was the last time that I was here. I can't recall being here before that, but <clears throat> stay tuned. I'm probably going to tell y'all when I get back to the hotel because my aunt has some friends over and they're kind of chit-chatting loud in the background. So my aunt calls herself buying a, a airbrush makeup kit, y'all. She don't apply makeup. She never wears makeup. She retired and bored. So, we're going to play with the kit. I have to put my glasses on because I want to see what you do. Uh -huh. I'm going to go with Friday night. And I think I'm going to put some one little drop. So this is before and after. Then you, you, you don't send nothing to the video? I did already. What you said? You want to introduce yourself? Hi, my Say name hi, is... hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. My name is Sandra Beckford. And, um... My niece is about to um, make me beautiful. So we're gonna turn it on. What's up? What? Why are you doing it so far from my face? I'm not, I'm coming closer. Makeup coming out? No. Yeah. Let me just feel it now. See, the thing about this is, this seems like it will take forever. <laughs> <laughs> it tickles? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, it, is it going anywhere? Yes, it's coming on my face. You feel it? Yes. Because I, can, I can't, really can't I, see it. That it's supposed to be natural. You don't see my face looking different? Not really, Auntie. You have such beautiful skin. Um. All you need to do, you going out Friday and like mommy does, all mommy does is put on a little mascara and some lipstick. Listen, I want to use this thing, okay? Okay. See, I can kind of see it over here. Maybe like I sprayed too hard or fast. 
Because you can see the streaks. After you done airbrush it around with the finger. <laughs> oh, see, no. I don't like, I don't, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Go look in the mirror. This one is how I just, I would just do these areas like regular highlighter. You just want the sun to hit right there. <laughs> Right there. I could never. <laughs> I could never use. <laughs> I could never use this thing. You see, I'm gonna ear touch your nose. <laughs> well, I see. Show the camera. Hi. <laughs> it's a no for me. Okay, it's going back. <laughs> hey, y'all. So I'm back to my hotel room, just spent a few hours with my aunt, my mother's sister. She's crazy, but I love her. So I wanted to give y'all a quick story time since I'm here in Fort Lauderdale and it just made me think of the first time I had a face-to-face -face interview with the company that I currently work for. Um, the company that's so near and dear to my heart, y'all know that I love my airline take my shoes off get comfortable because it's 10 p.m. and I'm really tired um, but so let me tell y'all right so the first time that I had my face-to-face -face interview my company does not pay to fly you out to your to your face-to-face -face interview like some of the mainline airlines that pay for your ticket to go to their face-to-face -face interview um, my company does not do that, but they do give you other things once you receive your CJO in my mind that kind of balances it out or makes, you know, makes it worthwhile or just working for this company really makes it worthwhile as well. So my first interview here was here in Fort Lauderdale, March 9th or 10th of 2017. Um, I flew in the night before. I stayed at my aunt's house, the one you just saw me with putting on the, um, the airbrush makeup. Um, I stayed at her house the night before. Um, she lives like 15, 20 minutes away from the airport. And I got here that night before. And I, you know, I looked it up on Google Maps to see how far the, the hotel interview location was from her house. It said it was a 15 minute drive. The interview started at 8.30 a.m. So I wanted to be there early. I wanted to be at least 30 minutes early, right? So wake up the next morning, like six o'clock, had my cute outfit ready, um, beat my face, put on my red flight attendant lippy, ate some breakfast, and we were out of the house, you know, by 7.30. This was a, it was either a Thursday morning or a Friday morning right y'all so I'm good to go I'm feeling good um, I was in a group chat with a few other um, hopefuls that were gonna be at the interview and everybody's you know oh like we're on our way there or some of them got a room at the hotel that the interview was at which was what my first mind told me to do Alexia just pay the money to stay at the hotel so, you know, you won't have any issues. But I was like, no, my aunt lives right around the corner. Like, it'll be okay. I wanted to save a coin, y'all. So, long story short, get on the road, smooth selling at first, and then dead stopped traffic, y'all. Just stopped traffic, not moving. So, you know, I, I'm not really one to, like, overly freak out about anything things just kind of start building up and you know like I try very very hard to stay calm cool and collected like it's gonna work out blah 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 and the whole time you know she's driving and trying to make it through back roads because she's known for a very long time how long that I wanted to be a flight attendant like anytime any airline opened up she would send me the the link, say, look, Lexi, this airline is hiring, you know, blah, blah. So she knew how bad I wanted it. And I mean, y'all, she is swerving and cutting through back roads and taking every alternate route that she possibly knows. 
And the whole time she's driving, I'm just sitting there in the passenger seat, looking at my Google Maps and seeing, you know, when it says that I'm going to get to the destination. And it's telling me I'm going to be three minutes late, y'all. And I'm just like, I just said to her, like, real slowly, I was like, Auntie, we, we have to get there a little quicker. Like, I'm going to be late. And they're not going to let me in. Like, you cannot be late to a flight attendant interview. Like, I said it nice and calm like that. She's like, no, you know, it's going to be okay. We're going to get there. And if you're just two, three minutes late, you know, it's not a big deal. And, you know, in her mind, you know, it's another job interview that you would go to. If you were to maybe show up a minute or two late, you know, they're not going to turn you around. They would still accept you, right? Most times, I mean, it's going to look bad, obviously. But they would probably still sit down with you, talk to you, or interview you. And hopefully, you can charm them and make them forget that you're late. But I knew. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. I knew if I would have got there any minute later than 8.30 they weren't going to let me in that thing. So, it's 8.30, y'all. And I'm in the car looking at the hotel, and I'm just like, <sighs> trying so hard not to freak out. So, she zooms up there. I, you know, hop out the car, put on my blazer, because I had steamed my blazer the night before, so I didn't want it to have no wrinkles while I was sitting in the car, so it was hanging in the back seat, looking all fresh. So, I hopped out the car, put my blazer on, you know, I didn't run, because I still wanted it to be, you know, I didn't want, you know, I didn't know who was watching. So, I was like, power walking in them hills, though, like long strides. Get to the front. I walked in, I was like, where's the interview for blah, 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 airline? And my heart is like beating, 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 right? He was like, oh, around the corner. So, literally, as I'm walking around the corner, I see them closing the doors. And I, like, honest to God, y'all, I almost just dropped to my knees, fell, like, buckled down, and, and bawled. But I was, but there was, I saw a guy in a uniform and another guy standing out there and another girl, she was like the one closing the doors and going in. And I kind of see them looking, but she's still closing the doors and he's still standing there. So, you know, I mean, this is an emotional moment for me. I mean, I've been waiting months for this. I applied in January. My interview date is finally here three months later. And I fly all the way to Fort Lauderdale, Florida to miss my interview. <sighs> Y'all. <sighs> so I walk up to the nice guy in his uniform. And I try to, you know, just collect myself, gather myself as much as I can. And I was like, I'm here for the interview. I know that I'm a few minutes late. You know, he's just looking at me with, you know, not like... I can't even really explain the way that he was looking at me. You know I know I can't let you in type of look. Like, but it looked like he really wanted to, but of course it would have just been unfair. He did the look thing, and I was like, I know I'm late. And I was like, I can't come in, huh? And he was like, no, I'm sorry. And y'all, when I say I just started, like, trembling, like, trying so hard to hold back the tears... And I was like, like I took the deepest of the deepest breaths and I was like, okay. I was like, well, thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. And he looked at me and he was like, well, what's your name? And I was like, Alexia. He was like, okay, it's okay. The application is going to open again. He was like, just make sure you apply and, you know, um, I'll push you through. And I was like okay you know and I'm just thinking he was just saying this to kind of make me feel better you know because I knew like you know if you miss an interview that's like getting the thanks but no thanks like we don't want you so and I was just like okay you know so I walked out the doors and my aunt is still sitting there waiting for me because I told her not to leave because I knew like I wasn't gonna be able to interview being late and I mean, y'all, and, and her crazy self, <laughs> her crazy self, I'm walking out, and this time, y'all, I'm a really, I'm a really emotional, dramatic person. Like, if my feelings are hurt, and really only when my feelings are hurt, 
I am so dramatic with it, y'all. It's, it's not even funny. But my feelings were hurt. I walked out of that hotel door, like, made sure the doors were shut. He can probably still see because, I mean, it's big, clear windows and doors. And I'm walking to the car, and I'm just dropping to my knees, like, <laughs> like sobbing. So she gets out the car, and she comes running. She's like, they didn't let you in. She's a crazy Jamaican lady, right? They didn't let you in. Well, let me go talk to you. You know, just like being a protective mama. Like, she's, heck, she's basically, you know, like, mama. So I was like, no, 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 auntie. Like, please do not go in there acting like a crazy lady, because then they will never hire me. Even if it's a year from today, they will never hire me. So I was like, no, auntie, like, just get in the car it's okay, like, I'm just going to shed these tears real quick, <laughs> be very hurt and disappointed, but know that there was a reasoning beyond whatever reasons, I still don't know what today that reason is, but hey, I'm here, it is what it is, so she took me to go get some Jamaican food, we talked about it, I called my mommy back in Houston, I told her what happened, and I cried some more, and... She was like, well, baby, it's okay. You know, God had other plans, in which I believed. That was the only thing that I believed in the moment that God had other plans. And I went back to Houston that next day, I think. Or was it that same day? I don't remember. But it was either that same day or that next day. And, um, you know, I wasn't willing to give up my dreams of becoming a flight attendant. Even though as, as much as I was in love with my current airline right now. <laughs> At that moment, my heart was broken, but I didn't want to give up. So I was like, you know, I got right back to it. I started looking to see who was applying again. Um, and I was just like, uh, you know, I saw a, a Sky West interview was happening in San Antonio, Texas, like that same week. And I was just like, well, you know, just let me go. Let me try it. Went ended up getting the CJO. So I'm happy again, right? Like I'm just, I'm ecstatic. I'm super happy. I can't believe it. Like a week or so later, I think it was April 1st. So a few weeks later, the airline that was very near and dear to my heart did open up their application again. And I did apply. And I remembered what the guy said. And oh, run back. After I missed the um, the interview, I ended up getting a thanks but no thanks email. And I was like, ah! you know, like it still hurt. Much as I knew it was coming, it still hurt my heart to read that. Like it killed my heart. And the thing that I was worried about the most was I was taking his word for it. Like he said he would pass me through to the next round if I applied again. And I knew that if you got to a certain point, you would have to wait a year to apply. So I sent them an email and I was just like, hey, I spoke with this person at the um, interview and, you know, I told him my situation and he told me if I applied again that, you know, I wouldn't have to wait the year, blah, blah. And they responded with, yes, you know, that's true, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I went ahead and applied again and this time it was taking them a lot longer to get back to me than it did the first time. And I was nervous because I was supposed to be going to Sky West training starting in May. So it's like the second or third week of April by now, and Sky West training was supposed to start the first week of May. So I'm like, well, crap. You know, like, if I go to Sky West training, I'm not going to be able to, if they do respond, like, be able to go to their interview or, you know, I was just, my head was just like all over the place. So finally, y'all, I get an a email it skipped the questionnaire, skipped the video interview, and it went straight to a, um, we want to invite you to a face-to-face. -face. And I was so excited. And this was like, this was, this was like April, like the late teens of April, early 20th of April. And so I'm looking at the interview dates, and the next to closest one was going to be in Long Beach, California. And I was looking at the prices of tickets to Long Beach, California, y'all. They were like $1,000. And I was like, oh, my God. And everything else, all the interviews after that were after I was supposed to start training for Sky West. So I was like, what am I supposed to do? Like, spend $1,000 to go to an interview or just take what I got and be happy with that? Like, I just did not know what to do. 
So I thought about it for a while. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to the interview. Long story short, I have a friend that works for an airline. He gave me a buddy pass. And I went to the interview, y'all. And I killed it. I smashed it. And the same guy, the same, same guy that was at the door that told me he, you know, he wouldn't be able to let me in was the same guy that did my face-to-face -face interview. I looked at him and I was like, well... Do you remember me? He was like, yes, I absolutely do remember you. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, well, thank you so much. And I said thank you so much because there was another girl that I was in communication with at the time of the first interview, the March 10th interview, that was also late to the interview and missed it. And she ended up getting a thanks but no thanks the second time she applied. So they had told her the same thing, you know, apply again and, um, will be able to push you through, you know, to an, another face-to-face -face interview. When she applied again, she got a thank you, but no thank you. And I was just like, whoa. You know, like, and of course the thank yous, but no thank yous, they don't tell you exactly why. And of course, it should, it would seem like she should get an interview because she got one the first time, but she didn't. So, anyways, went to... My face-to-face -face interview for the second time, April 26th or 27th um, of 2017 of this same year. Um, and those those weeks in between, I had just been studying my, um, my star formatted questions, like just going over everything and just making sure that like I felt like this was a true second opportunity for me to go in there and show them what I had, what I was, you know, what I was working with, why I would be great for that company. And I couldn't mess it up. So I wasn't late. I was there an hour and a half early, sitting on the couch, chilling, just waiting. Like, <laughs> nothing was going to stop me, y'all. So I ended up getting my CJO, as y'all know, super happy. And then fast forward to like maybe three weeks ago, I was working a flight and we had a crew member on there. And he's one of the gentlemen that do the fingerprinting for our airlines at the face-to-face -face interviews. So I was just talking to him, you know, and I was just asking him just random questions, you know, about the whole interview and why they only have one person that do the fingerprints because it takes long. Like, you know, I'm just trying to give them ideas to make the interviews go smoother. And little did I know, he goes, you know, I remember you. And I was like, what you mean you remember me? Because he wasn't the guy that did my fingerprinting at my April 27th interview. He was like, I remember you from the Fort Lauderdale interview. And I was like, bro, you know, like, I was like, I don't think you remember me. I was like, I didn't actually get to interview there. He's like, no, I remember. He was like, I was, you know, I was outside the door when the other guy was talking to you. And I was like, oh. He's like, I just want to tell you, you know, the way that you composed yourself and kept it together is what got you to this point. He's like, because people are late to the interviews all the time, but their reactions to, oh, no, you can't come in are not what our company wants. He was like, so you handled yourself so well that we were willing to give you that second chance and opportunity. And I looked at him and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, it just it just made my day so good, y'all. It just reaffirms for me that you should always, always, always hold yourself to a certain standard, no matter what the situation is, how you're feeling about it, no matter how wrong you think they are. Like, hold yourself to a certain standard and God is going to have your back. Like, that's what I believe in. Obviously, that is what happened, and I am just so 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 grateful so i'm not <laughs> don't go out here being you know three minutes late like y'all i was three minutes late to that first interview three minutes so don't be three minutes late be 30 minutes early get there on time um so don't don't take this video as oh lexi said i can be late and they'll they'll reschedule me for another one if i have a good attitude no that's not what i'm saying this world in this aviation world in this flight attendant world it's so competitive there's so many people out here that want those wings and they want to be in that little skinny tube flying around these high altitudes getting tossed around in turbulence <laughs> so many people want this life and you have to show these people 
that you are going to be a great representative of their company, whatever company it is that you're applying for. Don't let your emotions get the best of you, or at least if you are going to let those emotions get the best of you, because my emotions do get the best of me sometimes, do it when they're not looking, okay? <laughs> But anyways, y'all, that was just a little story time that I wanted to give y'all. Um, hopefully, it kind of motivated you in a way. I mean, other than that, thanks, but no thanks. Trust me, I've received, you know, 10 plus prior to that. But you can get to this point. Like, you can get here. You can finally get those wings. You just have to stay dedicated. Like, you cannot give up on yourself you can't let that first thanks but no thanks that second tbnt that third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth or how many ever if this is something that you truly want stay after it stay focused on it don't be dumb keep a job you know while you're trying to chase this dream but just get it done stay dedicated and i promise you it will happen anyways it is 10 21 p.m Shuttle comes at 4.50 in the morning, so this vlog may not get posted tonight because I really do need to get some rest. Um, so if it's not posted tonight, I'm sorry. So I'll just post two tomorrow. Today is day six of Vlogmas, so day six may get posted on day seven, but you will also have a day seven on day seven. So <laughs> if <laughs> y'all know what I mean. If this ain't up today, it'll get up tomorrow and day seven will get up tomorrow because I need to get some rest. Y'all know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you think I handled myself well at that interview, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you know when I'm posting and you can just keep up with everything that's going on in Alexia and Nicole's world, me living my life by design. Till tomorrow. Bye.